multiplying two complex numbers, piece of cake. You just keep the reals with the reals and the imaginaries with the imaginaries. And remember that we have this situation here, okay, where if you ever get I, I squared, just know that he equals negative one. Okay, and then as soon as you get to i to the fourth, the pattern starts all over again. That's why they use this as a rotation in a way. <clears throat> um, not in a way. They use it as rotations in more advanced situations. Um, but anyways, let's uh, go ahead and just play with these numbers, see what we get. Uh, it's good practice, good logic skills, by the way. So here we go, uh, 20, 5 times 4. Now we're just going to foil it, okay? So 5 times this guy is going to give us negative 15i. Then we're going to move to this second guy here for a plus 8i. And then this guy becomes a negative 6i squared. Now this format's going to happen every time. You're going to have a real number, two imaginary parts, and then an i squared. This happens almost every time, especially if you, when you have a binomial. Now don't worry about this guy. He's actually, that's negative 1. So really what you got here is a plus 6. The i squared did a, a placeholder for you and turned you 180 degrees when you, when you square him, okay? So, <clears throat> what does this mean? It means then that I can add the 20 and the 6 for 26. Now, there's a distractor right there because these guys still have to be combined together. That is a minus 7i, okay? So, those guys will combine just like any other type of like terms. Now here, um, we've got a division of it. So um, notice here, by the way, multiplying, you needed to know how to add and subtract. Um, with division, you need to know how to, to multiply, and therefore, you needed to add and subtract. So in a way, when you do division, you're showing that you know all of the major operations for um, complex numbers. And I'm going to sneeze here in a second. Okay, it passed. All right. So now what I need to do is I need to multiply by what's called the conjugate. And you just have to remember that. Okay, you have to remember that. So the conjugate is this guy, but he is the mirror image of him. Okay, the conjugate is basically the female and that is the male. So those two are conjugates of each other. They're like mates. Okay, and what they do is when they get together, they basically have, they have a new number. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, distribute. Okay, now remember we foiled up here. Foiling is just distributing twice. So here we're going to distribute. Okay, so here's 15 minus uh, 4 times 15 is actually 60. So 60i. Now it is not escaping me that both of these guys are divisible by 5. Okay, I can see that they're both divisible by 5. So maybe that will play into something later. So I'm going to pause that. Right here, I'm going to go 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times negative 4 is negative 4i. I should have said negative 4i. 4i times 1 is just positive 4i. Those guys will cancel. Then I'm going to get a minus 16i squared. Now, i squared is actually negative 1. So this is 1 plus 16. So this means I've got 15 minus 60i over 17. Now these guys do not reduce. So this, this is done. That's our final answer. Now you will notice though in some textbooks, okay, they might do that. They just split the 17 up because when you graph complex numbers, here's your x-coordinate and here's your kind of your, your y-coordinate, okay? So either way, um, this is probably better for us, but this in more advanced places you would see this. Okay, now this guy requires the complex, uh, I'm sorry, the quadratic formula. So they're telling us to use the quadratic formula. And you can see by our answers, maybe it would work out better for us anyway. Okay, so let's go ahead and do our discriminant, which is b squared minus 4ac. Now remember, he is part of the quadratic formula, one part. And sometimes what can happen is we might be able to figure out what our answer is like almost immediately. So let's see what happens. Now in this case, for the discriminant, I would actually have the b squared, which is negative 7 squared. And I, it's, it's amazing. A lot of you guys are still making mistakes by typing in negative 7 squared. You will do this, and it drives me absolutely crazy. 
you're going to get negative 49. That is not what you do. Make sure that you put in parentheses when you square, okay? Please, minus 4 times A. A is 9, and C is 7. All right, so let's see what we get. We get negative 203. So negative 203. I didn't even finish writing that down. That's fine. Um, okay, well, I do see a 203 here, but it's got an I. So, oh, that's why, because if we do this, X equals negative B, which is 7 plus or minus, we're going to be taking the square root of negative 203 over 2 times A. Okay, now A is 9, not 8. Okay, so, so far so good. Looks like we get our 18, we get our positive 7, and because we got the plus or minus, it looked like they split them up. And we took the square root of a negative sign, which ends up being I. So the answer is A. Okay? So sometimes with the discriminant. Now, be careful, though, because maybe 203 could have been broken down and you might have gotten something like this. So watch out for something like this. Um, let's just make sure that the uh, 203 is, um, well, let's see. No, nope. nothing will go in there. Uh, 203 might be a prime number. Okay, so that's good. Go to the next page. We've got another quadratic formula. Okay, so let's see. B squared minus 4AC. All right, so B squared, so 12 squared. I know it's 144, but I don't care. I'm just going to go ahead and just <coughs> you let the calculator do a lot of the heavy lifting. Okay, so I'm definitely going to get a positive number here, and I get 188. Now, I don't see a 188 here, so this means that 188 is probably going to get broken down. So, um, it also looks like that my B is going to be negative 12, and I don't see a negative 12 here. So, my guess is that these guys definitely break down. So, let's break down 188 first. Okay, and my guess is that 4 would go into those. Okay, there we go. So, 4 goes into there. And 47 is a prime number. So it looks like we got a pair of twos. So two is coming out. So I end up with um, a negative B plus or minus the square root of 188, which is take out a pair of twos, but leave in the 47 divided by uh, two times A, which is 22. Now that answer is not available here because well, it looks like we're going to divide everything by 2. Now, we got two of these guys right here, okay? These are pretty close to each other. But the thing with this is when I do divide all three of these guys by 2, now, really, three, there's actually, there's actually two numbers here, but there's two terms in each one. Um, so this means that if I divided everything by 2, I would get that, okay? So here, what you had to be careful was the negative sign. Careful of was the negative sign. So the answer is A and D was pretty close, okay? All right. Okay. Um, when will this guy have one real solution? Okay. Now, what we had to do is we had to remember discriminants. Okay, discriminants, b squared minus 4ac. This is a classic SAT uh, question. It, you can have positive, you can have a zero, and you can have negative. When, you're, when your discriminant is positive, you will have two answers. If your discriminant is negative, you are, I'm sorry, negative, you will have zero real answers. Okay, and in order to have one real solution, that means that your discriminant has to equal zero. So the discriminant of this guy has to equal zero. Now this is, this is good because what it's saying is b squared minus 4ac has to equal zero. Now what we have here though is we know the a is one and we know the c is 64. We just don't know the b. Okay, so b squared minus 4 times 1 times 64 has to equal 0. So b squared minus, I don't trust myself, but is 64 times 4, 
256 equals zero. Now 256, if I'm not mistaken, okay, it's a perfect square, so what's the square root of 256 here, okay? So what we can do here is if this is the difference of two squares, you can factor it, okay? Or you can look at it like this. B squared will just move this guy over to the other side. Take the square root and you'll get plus or minus 16. So it's not just six, it's not just positive 16. When you take a square root, you have to consider that there's a negative answer as well, okay?